What role do passwords play in SOC 2 and are, and are there any specific requirements? Obviously, passwords are important for any security system. It's a basic cybersecurity requirement to have strong password controls. Technically speaking, in SOC 2, there are no minimum password requirements. Uh, there are some standards, such as PCI, that do have very specific uh, minimum requirements for passwords, but SOC 2 does not. However, you want to follow best practices, follow NIST standards, of course, all the time. It, it's a must. You should be implementing MFA, multi-factor authentication at this point. There is no reason really not to do it unless you're on a system that can't do it. MFA is a very strong control. Regulators are looking for it now. It's a simple control for them to understand. So I highly recommend MFA if you can everywhere and all the time. Are there any specific security awareness training requirements for SOC 2? Again, technically speaking, there are no specific security awareness training requirements actually called out. However, it is a best practice and common control to implement security awareness training for all your workforce on an annual basis. Uh, basic cybersecurity training, how to create strong passwords, how to not go to sites that are malicious, how to identify phishing emails, how to report security incidents, all those things need to be part of your annual security awareness training. And every auditor is going to look for this, even though it is not required. What role do onboarding and offboarding controls play in SOC 2? So as with any other framework or standard, you have to onboard and offboard in order to ensure that access is authorized and access is removed in a timely manner. So when you're onboarding, the key is getting approval for the access and making sure that your new employees are following your onboarding process, getting a background check completed, getting their sign-offs on the policies, reading them, acknowledging them, doing security awareness training, uh, getting their machine set up with all the appropriate controls and endpoint protections in place, uh, getting them trained on how to use your systems, all that stuff. That's really important for SOC 2. Your auditor is going to want to see, did they get that access approved and did they follow the onboarding process? Is there evidence to support that? And then for offboarding, is the access removed in a timely manner? Usually auditors want to see access removed within one business day of the employee's last day of termination. And they also want to see that access it, there's evidence of the access removal, whether that's a ticket, whether that's actual system logs showing when access was removed or disabled. Uh, the, your auditor is going to want to see that. They're going to want to see a ticket or a checklist showing that all these steps were followed, who did it, when they did it, and, and were they completed uh, within one business day of termination. What role do access controls play in SOC 2? Access control is a fundamental control important to any company building a strong security program. Without access control, everybody could have access to all systems, even though they don't need it. You've got to follow the least privileged access rules, right? You don't want anybody to have more access to things than they actually need. Uh, the other thing when thinking about access control is granularity with access. So once you have, you're in the systems, does everybody need access to everything? Or can you set up roles and permissions for different teams and apartments for a, 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 a tool or a system? I know, for example, in Salesforce, a lot of people might need access to view things, but do they need access to modify everything? Probably not. Probably only your sales team needs that, but other departments are going to want to see data from there uh, and, and look at things. So they need access as well, but they wouldn't want change access. Uh, privileged access is also very important. Any system is going to have privileged users. That access needs to be very strictly controlled. If you don't control that access and everybody has an administrator of privileged access, that's going to be a huge red flag to your auditor because that's probably not the case unless you're a very, very, very small company and you're just starting. What role does incident response play in SOC 2? So again, incident response, another foundational control in any standard or framework while you're building a security program at your company. Uh, without incident response, your team might not understand how to respond to an incident when it actually occurs. So it's very important to run tabletop exercises to actually get the people in the room for when an incident does occur, that they know what to do, who to contact, when to contact somebody, who's supposed to call an emergency, who's supposed to notify customers, who's supposed to notify external parties about um, you know breaches of potential data. Um, there's all those things that need to be considered. And everyone needs to know their role. Everyone needs to understand what they might need to do in a certain situation, because for each different type of situation, it might be different. Um, if somebody isn't available, there have to be backups uh, so that people can help. Um, if, if there's an important incident response person, they're on vacation, 
there needs to be a backup person that can handle that. So incident response, very important. Your auditor is going to want to see your incident response plan. They're going to want to see that you test it. And if you did experience any incidents, they're going to want to see that you followed your incident response process. So it's very important to have this process laid out initially, very important to follow it if something were to actually happen, and very important to provide that to the auditor and have that ready when they ask for it. At a high level, what role do availability, confidentiality, processing integrity, and privacy controls play in SOC 2? So the foundation is security and the other four areas are optional. But when you think about availability, it's what it sounds like. Is your systems, are they available based on your commitments to customers? So you gotta have controls in place to make sure that your systems are available when you say they're gonna be available. That includes having backups ready, doing business continuity, doing disaster recovery, having capacity management in place so that you can scale up or scale down depending on usage. And, and you have to be testing your availability controls to make sure that if something were to happen, can I fail over to another environment and pull up the system and have it available to customers? Confidentiality is how do I keep the data sensitive data confidential? What controls do I have in place for restricting access? What controls do I have in place for retaining that data, for deleting that data when it's no longer needed? It's not just personally identifiable information. It's any type of sensitive data that you might have. Processing integrity is how you take data. How do you process those inputs? How do you output those inputs? And how do you control that whole process from start to finish? Do you have checks and balances in place to make sure that data throughout the, the processing is complete and accurate at each point? And finally, privacy is protecting personal data. Do you have the right controls in place to handle data, to disclose it to third parties? Do you make end users aware of, their, of your privacy controls and your privacy notices? Do you have disclosures in place if they're asking for how you use their data, do you tell them how you're using their data? So all those handling, collection controls, very important for personal data. Again, these other four are optional. You don't have to do them. You only have to do security, but many times companies do include availability and confidentiality in addition to security.